Hi, sewing friends. This is Erica Bunker, and this is my very first Know Me step-by-step -step video tutorial for my new pattern, ME2043. This step-by-step -step tutorial is for the pants, view C. For the fabric selections, it is suggested that you use cotton blends, jacquards, lightweight wool blends, linen blends, and twill. I used a stretch Mikado twill from Zulu Fabrics. For the pockets, you will also need lining fabric. It is suggested that you use cotton blends and polyester blends. For my pockets, I'm using cotton lawn fabric. Always make sure that you pre-wash your fabric and treat it the same way you would the finished garment to prevent any shrinkage. You're going to need to cut out pattern pieces 9 through 21, but I need for you to wait before you cut your fabric out for pieces 17 and 18 because we're going to do a little something different for the wall pockets. Okay, let's get started with the sewing. We're working first with pieces 9 and 10. I've surged the long unnotched edge of the front facing. With right sides together, match the small dots, the large dots, and the notches and pin in place. Now take it to the sewing machine and stitch. Press the facing away from the seam. Understitch the facing, turn facing to the inside and press. Next, we'll be working with pieces 11 and 13. With right sides together and raw edges even, you're going to pin the pocket facing to the side front, matching the large dots and notches. Stitch along the stitching line, stitch upper notched edge. Clip to the inner corner and trim the seams. Understitch front pocket facing and then turn to the inside and press. On the inside, with right sides together, pin side front and pocket to the front pocket facing with raw edges even. And take it to the sewing machine and stitch the double notched edge. I use my serger to finish off the edge. Base the side and upper edges together. For my pants, when I first made them, I noticed that there was a little bit of gaping in this area right here. So I decided to just edge stitch that down right into the corner. Now we're going to sew on the other facing. Just like with the other one, you're going to go ahead and serge the long unnotched edge of the side front facing. With right sides together and raw edges even, pin side front facing to side front matching the large dots and the notches. Take it to your machine and stitch the long notched edge. Trim your seam allowance. 
understitch the facing, turn facing to the inside and press and baste the raw edges together. This is how the inside look. Now you're going to open out the front facing. With right sides together and raw edges even, pin front to side front at side front edge. Match the large dots and the notches. Stitch from the lower edge to the large dot, pivoting at the dot and stitching down the lower edge. I clipped into the inner corner right before I serge to finish off the seam. Repeat the same step on the other leg and then both of your fronts will be done. Now let's work on the backs. For wall pockets, it is vitally important that you transfer all of your markings correctly. Wall pockets can be a little bit scary or sometimes intimidating, but once you learn how to do them, they are a wonderful detail to add to any pants or jackets. And I think once you learn my method of creating them, you'll really enjoy making them. And I hope that I'm showing you a way that will take the fear factor out of it. First, let's go ahead and make our dart. Pin your dart in place, matching your stitching lines. You want to back stitch at the beginning, but never at the end of the dart. Leave a tail so that you can tie the dart off. Press the dart toward the center. Now here is where my directions for the welt pockets become different than the pattern instructions. Using the welt pattern piece, you're going to cut out interfacing the same size. Fuse it directly over the welt stitching lines. Transfer the welt stitching lines onto the interfacing. You want to make sure that you can see your dots because those will be your most important stitching lines. Measure them and make sure that they are nice and even all the way around. Now we're going to stitch around the welt box. I start in the center instead of the corners because it makes the corners stronger. I use a shorter stitch length of about 1.5. When you pivot at the corner, make sure your needle is in the down position.
Here is where I change things up. Instead of using pieces 17 and 18, we're going to create our own pocket bag. We're cutting this out in our lining fabric, 15 inches long and 5.75 inches wide. Using the welt pattern, cut out two of those. One piece will be the actual welt that will go at the top and the other piece will be the facing and that will go below. Surge one side of the welt and both sides of the facings. With the wrong side of the welt to the right side of the pocket bag, you're going to stitch across the top using probably around a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to zigzag or use a straight stitch, whichever you like, on the bottom edge of the welt. Seven inches below that, you are going to zigzag or straight stitch the facing onto the pocket bag. Now we need to transfer the dots in each corner to the wrong side of the pocket bag. You can do this by simply laying the welt over the interfacing. They're the same size, so they'll line up perfectly. Put a couple of pins in there to hold it in place and flip it over to the other side. I did that so that I could put a pin in each corner so I know where the corners are to transfer the markings on the other side. Now with your pants right side up and the welt right side down, we're going to match the corners and pin the pocket bag and the welt to the right side of your garment. I have those pins there just to hold it. Now I'm going to flip it back over, making sure that you keep everything underneath smooth. Put in some more pins because we're going to sew from the inside. And remove the ones from the back. You're going to take it to the machine and from the inside, we're going to stitch over the previous stitching lines on the long edges only, not the sides, just the long edge.
still working from the inside. Now we're going to machine baste one quarter of an inch above the row of stitching that we just did. Repeat on the other side also. Working from the right side again, we're going to take the bottom of the pocket and fold it all the way up to the basted line we just sewed. You're going to hold it firmly against that line and you're going to put pins in it. We're going to flip it back over and bring it back to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch across the lower edge of the welt box, which is the lower line, over the previous stitching lines from circle to circle. Make sure that you are back tacking at each end. Also, make sure that you changed your stitching length back from that long basting stitch to your regular sewing stitch. Okay, that first welt is done. Now let's go ahead and get the other side sewn. Flipping it back over to the right side, we're gonna go ahead and take the top of the welt and pin it in place like we did the bottom. And we're gonna flip it over and put a few more pins in. And we're going to stitch from circle to circle over the stitching line. Working from the right side again, we're going to open that welt out and put a couple of pins in there to keep it open. Now we're going to cut right through the center of the welt. Be careful and don't cut through the pants. Now we're going to go ahead and cut open the welt on that center line. Clip into the corners. Make sure you're not clipping through the stitch lines. Go ahead and take out that basting thread. Now you're going to go ahead and turn the pocket through to the inside and you can see your welts already. Make sure that the triangular ends are also on the inside and take it to the ironing board and press it. Now we need to sew the little triangles to the welt to secure them. We're sewing right across that thread line. At this point, your welts are essentially finished on the outside and you can opt to just go ahead and finish the inside or you can add the flaps.
with right sides together, pin one of the pocket flaps that has been interfaced and the other one that has not together. Take it to the sewing machine and stitch a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, leaving the top edge open. Use your pinking shears to trim your seam allowance and also notch the corners in one step. Turn it right side out, take it to your ironing station and give it a good pressing and baste across the top 3 8 of an inch down from the raw edge. With right sides up, we're going to slip the flap into the opening, lapping the front 3 eighths of an inch down the flap and pin it in place. Working from the inside, this is how I'm going to pin it because we're going to sew right across the top of that stitching line. You're going to pin through all of the thickness and remove the pins from the right side. And you're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew right across that line. Now that the flap is done, we can go ahead and finish the inside by sewing our pocket bag. On the inside, we're going to bring the lower edge of the pocket up and pin it in place. I'm adding a couple of pins to the bottom just to keep that out of the way. Now let's pin everything in place and we're going to sew right over that same stitch line that we just did when we sewed the flap in. Now let's finish up our pocket bags. I'm just gonna go ahead and just serge all the way down on both sides and then baste across the top. And now your welt pockets are all done. Take a break now, clap for yourself, pour yourself a glass of wine, and let's get ready to stitch that leg. Stitch the front to the back at the inner leg matching the small dots and the notches. I sewed both sides because that's just how I make pants. I mean, like you can do it however you want to do it, but that's how I make pants. And make sure that you press your seam allowances. If you haven't already, go ahead and repeat all of these steps for the other leg. With one leg on the right side and one leg turned inside out, go ahead and pin at the center.
Now that you have everything stitched up, this is a great time to go ahead and try your pants on to check the fit. Go ahead and sew on your waistbands. Make your buttonholes in the front and at the front waistband at the markings. Sew on your buttons to the side front and waistband at the small dots. Sew your hem and give your pants a good pressing and you're all finished. Thanks so much for watching.